So paper two consists of three parts. You can see it says there's a question one and a question two, which is case studies, while question three is an essay. So paper two is very different to paper one. And in this video, we'll be looking at how to approach this paper and answer it most effectively. So paper two consists of three parts. When you get it, you'll see that it's got your, your actual test with your questions. And then there should be an insert that says source material booklet. You can take that one out when you get your paper and see that your paper consists of question one and question two, which are case studies like this. Case study section A, question one. And case study section two. Two, uh, section A, sorry, question 2, and then question 3, section B, which is your essay. Now, when you get your paper and they say it's reading time, you may start. The first thing I need you to do is to actually focus on section B, which is your essay. Never mind question 1 and 2. Start with question 3. Use that 10 minutes reading time to the best um, that you can. So what you need to do is you read the question first of all. Now, every essay, and it's the same every year is going to ask you to give your opinion regarding something it's either going to say do you agree with something or don't you agree with it um, what is the advantages what are the disadvantages you're going to weigh those two sides and then come up with your own do I want it or do, don't I want it with this essay in order to make up your mind and pick your side and give your opinion you will need the sources now you can see this paper from last year um, sure, it's got lots of pages. There's actually 16 pages of sources. So what you do when reading time starts is you grab this and you start reading. It's probably going to take you the whole 10 minutes to actually read through all this information. So just first of all, see what the question is about. Then you're going to, then you're going to start reading your sources. When they say reading time is over, what you then do is you take your two color highlighters and you take your pen and you decide all right so on your paper you decide I'm going to use the information to come up with my opinion to make up my mind to choose a side whether it's for or against that information or the the issue that they're giving you you're going to make this on your paper and decide okay all the information that is given in the sources that is against I'm going to highlight in blue, and if it's four, it's going to be in purple. Then you're going to take your source booklet, and you're going to read, having your highlighters in hand. And as you read, remember, you decided, you gave yourself a key, everything that's for your decision will be a plus, or will be in purple. Everything you decide which is against your argument will be in blue. So then you start reading. Blah, 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 blah. So whatever you read, if you find information, you decided this situation, this scenario that they gave you for the paper, you think it's a good idea. So every bit of information in the sources that they give you that says it's a good idea, in purple, you'll go, okay, that fact justifies my decision. I'm happy with it. It's four. There's a term for four. There's another fact for four. This. So you're going to highlight all your sources in purple as you go along. All the facts that help you decide you are for this decision. You will highlight them all in purple. So when your paper is, when you're done, finish reading it, all the highlighted areas in purple are going to be the facts that are for your argument. Then you can go to your blue and all the facts that they give in all the sources that is against your opinion. So that makes you say, no, I don't like it. You're going to highlight that in blue, which means when they say start with your paper, you already spend 10 minutes reading it. So you've got a basic idea of what's going on. When they say start, you immediately start with your essay. And you're going to highlight your fours and your against in two different colors. Now, be patient. Read it intently. Even if you have to read it three times, make sure you've highlighted. Now, the reason why I say do all the reading and pick the facts is that when you then get to answering, you'll take your answer booklet like this and you will do planning.
Now I know that all this planning and, and highlighting and reading and reading again sounds like a lot of work, but it's very, very important because if you look at this rubric, this is the rubric that is used to mark this 40 mark essay. 40 marks out of 100, that is 40% of the paper. So when we look at this rubric, you can actually see that there is indeed six marks, which is 6% allocated to planning. So in your answer booklet, the examiner will want to see that you planned properly. You do not get this rubric in your paper. So me showing you this is an assistance. You're not going to get this one in the actual exam venue. But in your booklet then, this is how you will write down your planning to get full six marks. So on the first page of your answer booklet, you're going to write your heading planning. And remember, this counts six marks. So you're going to write down a decision and then actually write down whether you are for or against it. Don't be a fence bunny. Please choose either for or against. Then you're going to write down your knowledge from your sources which means you are going to go back to your paper and all the things that you were against highlighted in against and all the facts that you highlighted for you are going to rewrite them so you're going to go to your sources and go all righty that let's see this was source a all right and then the giant lobelias, what, what, what it is, and you highlighted something in purple. You're going to write that fact down here. Okay, fact number first, and it comes from source A. Then you're going to go, there's another one, fact two from source A, fact three from source A, and you're going to actually rewrite, just briefly in short, all the things that you highlighted in purple, all the way right through, Till you're done with the entire thing. Let's say fact four, um, source C, and all the way back to source H, which was whatever. So even if you have to rewrite 10 facts down, it doesn't matter. You write everything that you highlighted in purple, you rewrite them shortly here, and you say which source they come from. Then you're going to do the same with all your blue facts. So you're going to go, okay, there's a fact in blue that, uh, that gives me um, a fact against. So the fact for against, the first one I found in source A, it was highlighted in blue. So I was against. Then oh, there's another one. So fact number two was in source B. And then I go all the way through. And every fact that justifies my decision against it, I'll rewrite that fact on my planning in my answer book and in brackets I'll say whichever source it comes from. Now the rubric also says that you need to have information of your own. So your next subheading in your planning will say own knowledge. And then you're going to give at least three facts that you learned from your textbook or your summaries or explanations in class that is not given in the sources. In other words, something beyond the sources. You need at least three of those. Even if you can just think of one, you write a one. The next thing then is you also need to somewhere in essay in your essay judge the quality of your sources. In other words, let's say you used out, uh, source A's information lots, but not too much about H. Any one of these sources, just pick one source. So pick one source, not all of them. You don't have to. And that one source, you're going to say there why you use the source. So for quality of source, you're going to then say, why do you think the info is um, reliable? Sorry, reliable. Why do you think it's valid? And why did you use it? You know, why is it useful? All right, that's what you're going to write in your planning. And then what you will do then is now you're going to connect facts against and for with one another that is completely the opposite, which means you need to formulate some counter arguments. Formulate counter arguments. Now for this, you're going to use those connecting words 
um, that you learned in English. So your English essay writing skills are going to come in useful here. So words like however, but, uh, despite of, uh, despite, or um, uh, whatever, however, but, despite, um, even if. You know, all those English words. I'm sorry, I'm not the English teacher. You're going to use, use these words and connect some of these. So what you'll do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to decide fact one completely contradicts fact three. So in your blue column, something that contradicts one of the purples, you're going to connect it with your ruler and say, okay, fact one is so despite fact three and then fact three on the against list mm, contradicts fact five over here and you're going to use a connecting word however so you're going to select the fact from the blue side which is your against side and you're going to pick a, a fact from your for side and whichever one contradicts one another, you're going to connect it with your ruler and then decide which of your connecting words are you going to write on that line because this is how you formulate a counter argument. And you need to formulate at least three counter arguments, which means you will have to have at least one, two, three connecting lines. So let's just do another one, just for the example sake, let me counter uh, fact two on the against list for the four, and I'm going to write a but on there. Okay, so this is what your planning needs to look like, and it is for six marks. So if you neglect to do this, there goes six percent. All right, the other reason why this is very, very useful is now when you start writing, if you spend at least half an hour write uh, planning like this and then you write it you will not need more than 15 minutes to write a perfect answer so what you can then do when all of your planning is done you can decide i'm going to make my decision in paragraph one of my essay i'm going to give my my knowledge in one or two paragraphs perhaps paragraph two and paragraph three so remember your knowledge over here and your counter arguments are actually going to be one and the same thing in the same paragraph, okay? Then you can have a separate paragraph, perhaps paragraph four, going to be your own knowledge. And then the quality of sources can be paragraph five, but it really doesn't have to be more than one or two sentences. And then obviously your last paragraph is when you conclude. All right. So if we look at this rubric again closely, you can actually see there's a mark for planning and the total for it is out of six. And you can see you need to make a clear decision. You have key points for your argument. Key points get developed a little bit. Your sources are referred to. That's why you put all your A, B, C's and D's um, in brackets. You've got your own knowledge and you've made counter arguments. So you've planned by putting those little lines in. So it's six marks. Then you also get a mark for making an actual clear decision that you stick to with throughout your essay. Then you get marks for the use of your knowledge from all your sources, both for and against. Then saying um, whether you agree with um, and whether you disagree with. And you've got your argument, um, counter arguments there. And then obviously you do get a last mark for scientific merit. In other words, how well you've actually put the essay together. But if you do a proper planning, it's going to be much easier to get full marks for this essay. The best news also is if you do not um, finish your writing your whole essay, your um, examiner will actually look at your planning and expand on these key points to see where you were going with your essay. So you won't get zero if you didn't write your essay, but at least you've got your planning. So once you've completed your essay, that should have taken you about 45 to 55 minutes. Then you go on to do your two case studies, each about 35, 30 to 35 minutes. All of the best, you guys.